Hello there. My name is Jared and I want to welcome you to the first of what I hope is going to be a fun and informative and not too nerdy series of videos about how I am going to design and build a museum quality scale model of the cruise ship, the SS Oceanic. Yeah, it's going to be nerdy. <laughs> I've been building ship models semi-professionally for about 20 years now and I'm getting pretty good at it. To date I've made 43 models, most of them being custom commissions for museums or collectors. I have never, however, made a video. So we'll see how this goes. The client asked for his model to be made to a scale of 1 to 144 and that makes it 165 centimeters long and 20.4 centimeters wide. He's providing me with a set of plans and a CD full of photographs to work from. But before I get into the build, here's a brief description of the subject. The Oceanic was a cruise ship built in 1963 for the Italian cruise line company Home Lines. She made a few transatlantic crossings, but by the mid-60s air travel was taking over as the choice mode of transport across the ocean. The ship then started doing pleasure cruises between New York and the Bahamas or the Caribbean. In 1985, the Oceanic was sold to Premier Cruise Lines and was renamed the Starship Oceanic. She started doing three to four day runs between Port Canaveral and the Bahamas until the year 2000 when she was given the appropriate but rather unimaginative name Big Red Boat. The company went bankrupt later that year. The ship was then sold to Pullmanter Cruises and was given back her original name, the Oceanic. After some refitting in Spain, she began cruising out of Barcelona and did so until the fall of 2009 when she was sold to the humanitarian group Peace Boat, based in Japan. While on her 2009 cruise around the earth entitled Global Voyage for Peace, she was attacked by grenade-throwing pirates off the coast of Yemen. With a combination of evasive maneuvering and blasting the pirates with high-pressure water cannons, the Peace Boat managed to fight them off. Finally, after a 49-year career, the Oceanic was sent to Zhujiang, China for scrapping in July of 2012. So this is what I hope to accomplish at the end of the first video. This is a skeleton of a ship that I had built a long time ago. It's called the Niagara. And there are two different types of wood here. The uh, piece that goes fore and aft is called the false keel. And the several pieces that are on the side that make up the shape of the ship are called bulkheads. So I've got the plans and I have to draw each of these parts in the CAD program in TurboCAD and then I will send those files away to a place that will laser cut all of these parts because I don't want to cut these out by hand. Laser will do a much better job than I ever could and uh, then I'll get them back and by the end of this video hopefully have something that looks like this but is more the shape of the oceanic. So these are the plans the client sent me, starting from the top decks and working down. All of the upper decks are here and the side of the ship. He wants it to a scale of 1 to 144, so that should be 165 centimeters long. The plans are quite a bit smaller than he wants it, but that's okay. He sent me digital copies of these as well, so I can scale them in a software program I use called TurboCAD, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So these are the plans imported into the computer. I was very fortunate that the client had uh, paper copies and digital copies of the plans, so he sent them to me. Often I have to find my own. But in this case, they were imported into the computer. They weren't the right size. It's very easy to scale them to be the right size. In our case, the ship is supposed to be 165.6 centimeters long. That is the length of the real ship divided by 144. And we can scale the width as well to be 20.4 centimeters. You haven't seen this drawing yet, but it came with the plans. It's the station lines, and it describes the shape of the ship at different longitudinal points along the length of the keel. So, for example, this number 20 here is the shape of the ship right at the bow, and number 0 here is the shape of the ship at the rudder post right here. So what I had to do was draw these 
in TurboCAD using the spline tool and I would have zoomed right in on these to get these curves as accurate as I possibly could. And I certainly won't do all of these because it would get very boring. And after they're all drawn, it looks something like this. What I have to do now is copy these And this shows the shape of the stern of the ship. I mirror them and we'll end up with all of the station lines for the bow half of the ship and all of the station lines for the stern half of the ship. Now that the station lines are drawn, I have to edit them to add decks and so that they can be cut out of wood and assembled onto the false keel. What I do is separate them out and then edit each one. When I'm happy with what I've done, I copy it into another row and then edit it a little bit more and copy it into another row. In case I mess something up, then I can always go back to the previous row and start over. I've drawn the false keel in a similar way and added some slots so that the bulkheads can be slid into position and are captured at each of the station lines. Once all of the edits on the bulkheads are done, they start to look like this. And each of these is numbered according to its position on the hull and laid out on a sheet of plywood that is a quarter inch thick and 48 inches long, 12 inches wide. The false keel here has to be broken down into two pieces because it's longer than the 48 inches. I've also done this for the decks. These are all of the decks on the Oceanic, and as you can imagine, there are lots of them. So these are on thinner plywood. I've also drawn the porthole patterns on the side of the ship. The midship section of the Oceanic is pretty much flat like a wall, so this should go on fairly easily. But towards the bow and the stern where it starts to curve in, it's going to be more difficult. These drawings are much, much longer than the Oceanic. You can see this is the midship section and these two doors are copied here. So there's going to be lots of overlap and I will lay it on the side of the ship flat as long as the run of the portholes stays nice. But once it starts to curve off of a pleasing line, I'll be able to choose where I splice these together so I can maintain a nice line of portholes. Do you remember the numbering system for the bulkheads? It went from 0 to 20. I had never seen anything like that before, so I wanted to put this into the 3D capability of TurboCAD to look at it and make sure that the run of the planking was going to be smooth. And it looks like it's going to be very good. There are no bumps or whoops or, or any crazy things happening with these bulkheads. Each one seems to flow nicely into the next one, so I think it's going to be good. I had never used this function in TurboCAD, the 3D capability, but I learned it for this and I'm happy I did. I think it's looking pretty good. So now that all the bulkhead and keel and deck patterns are drawn out nicely and placed on panels of wood, I'm going to send them away to this laser cutting place, National Balsa. They supply hobby and craft wood and they also do laser cutting. So here's the information needed to laser cut things. I will send my DXF file in and hopefully in a week or two I'll get it back and then we can actually start building this thing. Well that looks like a good time to end this first video. So when the wood comes in I'll start this up again but until then I need a signing off catchphrase. <laughs>